What's happening, guys? It's Silent Mike with a special rendition of Fix Your Form, where I take everybody's form, my subscribers, my followers, my family, my friends, and try to help you guys out with your list, giving you coaching cues. If you want to get involved, send me 70% for three reps at askmikke at gmail.com from the front, from the side, and we will try to get you in the next video. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is ladies' night, and I'm feeling right. We got a full ladies' rendition of Fix Your Form. Now we got some sumo poles here. Uh, form actually looks pretty dang good. Um, from right here, what I would try to say is if you can, straighten your toes out a hair and start to force those knees out even more. Uh, one thing you can do is probably just kick your heels out rather than straighten your toes out. That'll make your stance slightly wider. And then what we want to do is really force those knees out. Right now it just looks like your knees are coming in a hair which just isn't the most strong position. We want to stack those knees on top of our midfoot. Um, and it just looks like they're getting a little valgus, like they want to come forward and on the inside. Uh, so if you move those heels out, which will straighten the toes, and also move your stance out, and then really force your knees out as hard as you can. Uh, the other thing right there is it looks like you get a little bit of ankle collapse, which is part of that knee valgus. From the side, we'll be able to see a little bit more. Um, from that starting position, it looks like I was correct where your knees are a little bit ahead of the bar, and so then your body weight is ahead of the bar. Once you pull, your hips shoot up first, and all the weight comes in front of the bar and onto your toes, where we want the weight from the start throughout the entire lift heading backwards. So straightening out those toes, Forcing your knees out will keep your shins more vertical, and then what you'll allow to do is have your hips slightly higher and pull from there. We want full tension in our hamstrings and glutes before we pull, so then when we yank on the bar, the load doesn't yank us forward at all. We already have some tension on that bar, and we're going to move that bar where we want to go and not let the load pull us forward or knock us out of position. Overall, it is very, very good. Uh, your back's in a great position. Uh, stomach looks tight. Lats look tight. You could experiment with moving your head up just a bit. Sometimes on the sumo deadlift, because you can get a little bit more uh, vertical torso, that means you're a little bit more upright, we can look a little bit more upright. Now, we don't want anything drastic one way or the other. We don't want our neck wrenched way up with our chin looking up at the sky, and we don't want our neck or chin straight down. A neutral spine is a very common cue people coach, um, but it is very particular in my opinion. Now we're moving on to some conventional. Um, right there looks really, really solid. What I would say uh, just from step one right here is we want to get those knees well inside of our arms. And so what you could probably do is just move your stance in. Uh, you know, a general cue people say is to start with a conventional stance, the same stance you would to jump your highest or test your vertical. Uh, but often I would say the majority of people, um, normal sized people, not some mega giants, uh, is that you'll probably be able to do a more narrow stance than your jump. So I'd move your stance uh, almost uh, more narrow than your hips, and then that'll allow your uh, hands to be even closer, shortening the range of motion, and they'll be just outside, if not touching your arms, your knees and arms, that is, rather than now they're kind of on top of each other. Um, everything else looks pretty solid from this angle. What I would focus on is keeping that head in the same position. Uh, you kind of look down, and again, you wrench it up a little too drastic for my uh, liking, so I would try to lock that chin and head in, probably just somewhere on the horizon or at this gym location if you deadlift in that exact same spot next time just look at that white line ahead keep your chin tucked and eyes on that line your back and everything hip position actually looks really really solid it looks like you're losing a little bit of balance sometimes turf can be a little uh, forgiving because it's made for running on obviously uh, but it could be a little uh, extra too much extra cushion for lifting if you have a little bit of a running shoe which it looks like you have on plus a little bit of a cushion from the um turf, it'll be a little wobbly. So I'd recommend finding a flatter place to pull and maybe even flatter shoes. Lock that chin in and then let's get your entire foot onto the ground. I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you guys. Hopefully some of you with these visual cues and my oral cues, audio cues, I don't know what the heck they're called. Uh, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. My friends, we're dropping a video every other day on this channel, trying to help you guys out, show you my experiences, a little bit of gym vlogs, a little bit instructional. On to the next one. This gym looks really cool. Uh, starting position here, looking solid. I think we started straight in the slow-mo, unless she's just moving slow, but the guy in the background's frozen. Let's see what we got. In the slow-mo, it's looking pretty dang uh, solid, if I do say so myself. Back's in a good position, hips in a good position. You can see, you kind of know that you have some tension in your hamstrings uh, or your hips are in the right position if they don't shoot up early when you pull on the bar. 
Uh, that means that they're in the proper place to pull, uh, and it also means that you have some kind of tension in your hamstrings and glutes before you get that bar moving. Uh, one thing I would say is I would like to see, again, your chin up just a hair, eyes up just a bit. Sometimes if your chin's too far down, you'll allow your body weight to fall forward too much. And then number two is we need to learn and get those lats a little bit more flexed. So pulling that bar into you, think about covering uh, your armpit with your shoulder and really wrapping that bar. I think about bending that bar around my shins. Uh, you've seen the old strongman or their old circus show where they're trying to bend a bar and they kind of use their knee. I think about bending that bar around my legs and that will automatically flex your lats a little bit more. So flexing the lats. Make sure that breath is nice and tight. Again, breathing into your, your belly button, your sides, and your low back. Embracing down. We want to make um, our midline as stiff and rigid as possible. Flexing those lats, and then I would just move those eyes up a little bit. So I'd probably just look, you know, maybe uh, three feet further forward than you are right now, allowing your body to kind of force yourself backwards into position. Um, but the rest of it looks really, really good. That's a super clean conventional pull. Uh, and I do appreciate ladies, which I've known forever, um, coaching basketball and lifting, that ladies are much better at following directions than guys. Uh, you know, I've said it in the beginning of every video, if you guys want to get involved, to email 70% uh, for triples. Uh, and there's a reason. Uh, there's a reason for that. Um, you know, whether it's a beginner or, or intermediate lifter, often if you get too heavy, too close to your one rep max, um, your form breaks down uh, and it's too hard to coach a cue. Um, it's too hard to tell you guys what to fix because you're going so heavy, something's going to break down or many things are going to break down. Rather, at 70%, if something's breaking down, then we actually have something to work on your form and you can fix it around 70%. That's why I'm a big fan of submaximal training where if we're training the majority of our stuff between 50 and 75%, that's a load and, a, and a, a, an intensity that we can handle over and over for repetition. And with repetition, we can focus on our form and we can focus on building volume, which is the main driver in strength and high hypertrophy which let's be real we all want to get strong and we all want to get jacked so volume is going to be key and again repetition like every other sport is going to allow us to practice over and over like shooting a free throw or hitting a golf at a golf range a golf ball at a golf range and then again with the lighter loads these loads aren't so heavy that all we have to do is pull we can focus a little bit on our form uh, from this angle again it actually does look really good i would just move those eyes up a little bit it looks like the bar is really close to your body which is exactly what we want both conventional and sumo we want it uh, starting position on our shins and to remain on our pants or skin the entire pull uh, but i do think you could flex your lats a little bit harder at the start uh, and that's just going to over time allow you to be stronger, allow you to uh, be more rigid in your midline, obviously build a bigger back, but control that barbell a little bit more. Um, overall, really, really, really clean pull. Stance, uh, again, this is, like I said, a little bit in from hip, and I think um, from hip width, and I think for the majority of conventional pullers, um, both male and female, that are, you know, even somewhere in the average range of size, uh, this is gonna do well. If you're a little bit bigger or you might have a little bit of a belly, you might have to go a little bit wider. Um, a taller guy or a taller uh, lady might have to go a little bit wider, but you may um, may not. Often it depends on, on, on arm length. A lot of times ladies have longer femurs uh, between their knee and their hip bone, their thigh bone, uh, than gentlemen do, which can cause some problems for um, pulling. But luckily enough, sometimes ladies have longer arms also uh, in, in ratio to the rest of it. So then they can kind of make up for that. A lot of times you see a lot of uh, ladies pull sumo uh, and going over. Oh, we're, we've got speedy pulls. That looks pretty good too. So you see that head position there because um, she's pulling conventional. She's not looking straight down. She's kind of looking up on the horizon. And typically for both, if I had to give a blanket statement, I would have both conventional and sumo pullers kind of look on the horizon. Um, I don't love your toes being so split apart. If you don't need to, I would try to straighten out your toes just a little bit. Everything else looks really good. I would take your time on the ground a little bit and really focus on breathing and bracing in your stomach and flexing those lats again. You can see your armpits a little bit exposed and that kind of goes for all the ladies today. You want to really flex those shoulders down. You want to think about getting your shoulders as far away from your ears as possible, shoulders as far away from your ears as possible. I think about pointing my elbows behind me, bending that bar around your legs, and that'll allow you to flex those lats. Even just doing a straight arm lat pull down the old bodybuilder movement will kind of give you the same um, feeling and the same motor pattern as we should be doing in our uh, a reverse shrug. 
I don't know if that's the first time that anyone's ever said that, but I like it. A reverse shrug is what we're trying to do to flex those lats as, as clean as possible. Um, you're definitely made to pull right here because you get into a great starting position. It looks so effortless. That's a, a, a great pull. Appreciate you guys. Be respectful in the comments. Sell a mic. I'm out of here.